Well, thank you. I just correct you. There are only 480, so <laughs> it must be some doubles there. So anyway, thank you very much that you are coming. The orthopedic surgeons um, have different focus, but um, you might encounter once a year or once a lifetime that you might save a life. And if you save once in your lifetime a life, then you will remember that. Have you ever been confronted with sudden cardiac arrest? Some of you. Have you performed already a course on CPR? Some of you. Do you repeat that every year or every second year? I recommend you to do. So few faces who sustained sudden cardiac arrest and died. And many of those could have been prevented. There are just few names. The BASEM has uh, collected uh, the sudden cardiac deaths uh, in the world of football around the world, but the figure with 57 over 25 years is heavily, heavily underestimated. I have put in red two of them who died. Mark Vivian Foy, and that was 2003 during the Confederation Cup in France, in Lyon. I was very much involved in this case. I went through every details, including the forensic medicine, the pathology and abduction, and uh, all the details. And this case has shaken with the world of football because it happened in front of running uh, cameras in such an important event. The other one in red, Morosini, that happened in Italy, and it's a, another spectacular case. He collapsed. Everybody has realized it's sudden cardiac arrest, but the ambulance couldn't come in because the private car of the manager of this club or of the owner of the club was just standing in front of the ambulance. What a tragic coincidence. So we as a doctor, if you are responsible for competitions, we have to check every details, that everything is in place, that you have a plan, that you know how to do it, and you have the equipment to use it. I travel very often with the uh, defibrillator when I go to a special events or special occasions where I'm not expecting that there is one, just for the sake that I have one in case that something would happen. So those few names, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There is a very huge dark figure below, which we do not know, and I will demonstrate it even on your country. So it's all started. 2003 and I checked the literature and the sudden cardiac death in general population is just not known. It's just not known because nobody registered. Incidents in football not known but only individual cases are reported. So 2013 that was one of my last actions and it still goes on. We have established a prospective registry on sudden cardiac arrest sudden cardiac death. And please, Dr. Paisan and everybody who is responsible for the sport in Thailand, collaborate with us and inform us. It relates to players at every age or level, amateur or elite, training or game, up to one hour after training or um, match. Currently, we collect whoever sent us information we have a worldwide screening of the newspapers to get information about sudden cardiac arrest, sudden cardiac death in the different languages. But of course, this is insufficient. We need the collaboration of the doctors. The idea is why the young people are dying. What's the underlying pathology? So already during these three years since this is in action, we have, we have collected 467 sudden cardiac arrests and 345 out of them died around the world. Only 122 
from those survived. The mean age was 34 years. And 57% of those we have registered were below 35, so young people. The frequency of the reports we have gathered together from Europe to South America, North America, Australia, and Africa. We have more cases registered from Africa than from Asia, only 29 cases. This is definitely, the, let's put it in a polite way, it does not reflect the reality. Only one case from Thailand. This, is, this cannot be. We have 110 in Italy alone, because they have the best functioning registry on sudden cardiac arrest in sport. So please help us, because um, we can learn a lot from this. And you know that if something happened, even if you are not directly involved, just report us. The survival rate is in Australia and North America the best, about 50%, probably due to the availability of AED on the pitch. And I show you the next quite important um, slide. Elite players, only 7%, non-elite, those are recreational, 44%, or non-elite and recreational. So the majority are dying on the pitches when they play recreational or organized football. Thailand doesn't have national sudden cardiac death registry. From Asian countries, only Japan has one. We should organize one, Dr. Paisan. The national sudden cardiac arrest registry. So the top causes of death from our database, what we can say up to now, is the coronary artery disease, cardiomyopathy, and electric heart disease. Below 35 years of age, cardiomyopathy, coronary anomalies, and electric heart disease. Electric heart disease, you hardly can predict. The others, you might mitigate the risk by performing a uh, regular checkup, regular uh, pre-competition assessment. I skipped the myopathy because this you know. Now from our registry, the external defibrillator on the pitch was related to 66% of survival of CPR. That means if you have an AED on the pitch, 66% of sudden cardiac arrest will survive. In two thirds, you can save the life. If there is somebody who understands CPR, that was associated to 41%. So already a correctly performed CPR will save the life in 40%. If you delay the CPR by four or five minutes, that only one from 118 will survive. So there is not much time to lose. You have to have plan, you have to be prepared for the worst. You have to have the knowledge, and I will show you a few examples. You will be surprised, and you have to have the equipment. So what can we do to reduce the number of tragic cardiac events in sport? We have published it just a wake-up call, and of course I recommend to read it because you learn. We have also created the FIFA medical emergency bag. It's everything in it to secure a life for minimum of one hour before you get help. Also, this is published for free. We, are, we have no commercial interest to that. We have distributed such a bag to every country around the world as an example to copy in the country to distribute on the different pitches. And there are some countries we did that. One of them is New Zealand, like uh, I reported about the injury prevention. They got the message. There is a bag on every pitch. There is an uh, external defibrillator on every pitch, on rugby and on football. That's basically the content, but you can read it. I show you a few pictures. We did a course on CPR for the team doctors prior to the World Cup 2014 in 
Brazil. And to my great surprise, the whole day, the experienced team physicians of national teams, the best of the best, they were working very intensively in every details, how to free the airways, how to apply the first aid, how to do the CPR. And they were not from so-called third world countries. You have here in front, you have a uh, team doctor of the Spanish team, you have the team doctor of the Czech team, you have one of the prominent African team. Just to learning, I was surprised. We all can learn. I have done those courses several times, but I repeat every year. I checked my defibrillator is working, that the batteries are okay. So the last one which I did was in course of preparation for the World Cup in uh, Russia, together with my colleague Efraim Kramer. Now watch this. I go back again that you can see it once again. Falling down without a contact with other player is sudden cardiac arrest and you react immediately. You have no time to lose. This player did not survive. Chaos, everything. If a player goes down and there was no contact, it's clear it's sudden cardiac arrest. And you have not much time. You have about three, two minutes is optimal to start the CPR. Depending on the individual situation and on the individual variables, health variables, you might go up to four or five minutes. But then the player is the dying. So you should actually optimally apply the first shock with the defibrillator within two minutes. Time is really critical. And I will show you. So plan the shock of the defibrillator within the first two minutes. Forget the breathing, because there is enough oxygen in the brain for at least five minutes. The important is that you keep the blood flow going. So you apply the CPR, the sooner, the better. Do we need some drugs? We all are afraid of those emergency situations. We think only anesthetists can do it. Only those who have a special education. Do we need some drugs in such a situation? How much? What kind? You know, all those movies you see that somebody is giving intracardial adrenaline injection. That's not true. You don't need anything in such a situation. Just your brain and your hand. So no drugs involved in the initial situation. There is a Spanish company who understood that uh, they have provided this app CPR 11 for football, but it's general for every sport, so you can get the, actually the online teaching. Before I come to my last slide, we have distributed this emergency bag during the FIFA Congress 2012 in, um, in Mauritius. Every national organization received that. Soon after, I received this mail, and that really touched me deeply. Dear Dr. Yirshi, wanted to inform you that in Kathmandu, Nepal, I think the president of the Nepalese Orthopedic Association is at this meeting. During a semi-final match of uh, championship 2003 between Nepal and Afghanistan, and so on and so on, one of the Afghani team collapsed and had sudden cardiac arrest. His life was saved due to timely intervention of competition doctor. He used the FIFA supplied automated external defibrillator to successfully revive the player and then quickly shift it to the hospital. When I received this mail, of course, it's a big motivation to continue. I never met this doctor and probably I will never meet this doctor in my life, but through this action, a life was saved of an Afghani player. You might remember this player from Bolton Warriors, Fabrice Muamba. He also collapsed on the pitch during a prominent match of the Premier League. The doctor who is here on the, here in this, he had a defibrillator, he knew what to do. Everything clicked in action in time 
and Fabrice Muamba life was saved. I met him about six months later in Zurich and those are the moments when you really appreciate what our profession can do. Remember, we have registered only one sudden cardiac death in Thailand. I assume they are probably several hundreds of sudden cardiac arrests in the different sports recreational in Thailand every year. And read this incredible story. This is also from our registry from Malaysia. September 2018, we are now in October. So it was last month and really touched me against very deeply. The team has played football and their trainer just collapsed. And they were, they were already trained how to do CPR. The boys between 14 to 16 years, I can teach CPR to anybody in five minutes because you don't lose anything. If somebody goes down without having contact with somebody else, it's a sudden cardiac arrest and you start immediately. This young teacher, as you see on the left corner, just collapsed during their training. The boy started CPR and they were even using the automated external defibrillator and they saved his life. Isn't that incredible story? Just last month. Of course, that disappears somewhere in, uh, that was reported in the media. We picked it up. We have got more information about it, got the pictures, and we want to collect more that we can make the people aware of this situation. And now I come to something which I, for the very first time, to present. Last year, I was talking on a concussion symposium in New Zealand. And after the meeting, this boy on the left side comes to me, he's age 25, his name is Josh, and he allowed me to show that. He survived sudden cardiac arrest. He comes to me, falls around my neck and says, doctor, you saved my life. The same story as the Afghani player in Kathmandu. They had the defibrillator provided by us on the pitch, and I have do they have provided me with the entire documentation of the event. So please watch very carefully. This is actually for the first time that I see it in that situation on a football pitch, on a pitch where they played um, futsal. Regular training in New Zealand. So they videotape every training, just preparation for the training. The video goes four minutes. I think I'm very well in time. Okay, did you see that? Watch now carefully in this side. He walks, walks, walks. Bang. No contact. The blue player comes to him. And now the seconds are running. More are coming. Of course, they are, there is no doctor, there is nobody, they are just the players. Now, they did the right thing. Two of them stay with the, I spoke with them. They stayed with the player. They sent everybody away. They did already the course on CPR. Now they have realized it's sudden cardiac arrest. So the black one is running to get the AED. Look, he's running back. We are three minutes, four minutes and he starts CPR. So it took him three minutes and 40 seconds to start. It was still enough. And wait, CPR. Now get off. First shock was applied. Continue CPR. Seven minutes. Now the white one, now you will see, concentrate on that. I can't make it bigger because... Stay away. Shock. So they applied approximately 30 shocks 
with this young boy and continued with the CPR. We are now at nine minutes. So the blood flow was going through the massage. 14 minutes, the eight is coming. Still CPR. For me, this player in blue and the player in black, they are really heroes. They made the right decision and they started to do that. No house, very quiet. The rest of the team is waiting and observing. More people coming. They are continuing shock and CPR. Now the paramedics took over. But they do basically the same. You get pretty tired when you do it for 20 minutes. So you have to change actually after one minute if you have the opportunity. So we are at 19 minutes, 19 and a half minutes. And now they stop CPR. The heart is beating again. So it took them 21 minutes. Now the stretcher is coming. Everything you can't, now it's no rush. The heart is beating again. So this person get in life after approximately 29 minutes. Now they transfer him to the hospital. They did all the assessment and um, applied an um, internal defibrillator, which uh, didn't click in action since. He's playing football again, futsal. He has the defibrillator. He's very happy. He has absolutely no cognitive dysfunction. He didn't suffer anything uh, from that. So those four minutes, um, he is well trained. So the oxygen was enough for that time. So I showed you this video just to stress. It can happen absolutely unexpectedly. But keep in mind, if you are responsible for teams, make sure that you are wearing external defibrillator with you, because this can save life. So please help us to get uh, the information. If you have iPhones, make a picture of this last slide. This uh, doctor in Germany is now responsible for the registry. Florian Ecker, I am going to meet him next week, and um, that we streamline that you can also go through him or you can go through this web page which you have on the top and you will you can register the case uh, directly in the internet then you will be contacted by Florian to get additional information what we want to get is the information about the medical history before the sudden cardiac arrest so with this I thank you very much for attention and I hope that uh, I could share some of my experience with you. Thank you.